Hi, this is Julie from the Sewing Palace, and I'm here to give you a little sneak peek for our sewing club that's next Tuesday. So we're going to be featuring Angles with Ease 2 book, which has got some really fun things in it, and lots of projects that you could be sewing from now to Christmas. So I'm going to go ahead and show you some of the tools that I like to use when I'm doing this because it just makes your job a little bit easier. So the first thing I'm, all my pieces are laid out on, this is an OmniGrid um, flip and fold and it's really great because it's got the cutting mat on one side and your ironing surface on the other. Makes it very easy to fold up and take with you to classes but also when you're working. Very nice, easy um, to use. So we also have the triangular ruler. This is your companion ruler that goes with the book we're going to show. Frickson pen for marking, those are a great tool. We have the maker tape. This is awesome for underneath our rulers to help it to keep from sliding. We have our best press. Kai scissors, a rotary cutter, and a nice little um, Creative Grids uh, ruler so that we can be doing some trimming up, and of course our Rowenta iron. But don't forget your Bernina sewing machine. So that's going to be a nice tool to help you as well with a quarter inch foot on there. So today we're going to just go ahead and get started with um, all these little tools, and I'm going to show you how this cuts out. It's kind of a fun little thing, an easy process that we can use. And we're going to start by showing you, um, well, we've got two little treat pieces for you here. We're going to show you the trees and then these little flower pieces. All very fun, easy, and fast out of the book. So the first one I'm going to show you is this flower one. And it looks complicated, but it is so super simple. You're going to start with all your little pieces and parts here. I'm just going to grab them and put them out here. So to start with, you're going to start with the piece three pieces of fabric to make one little petal. So you're gonna take a piece and a piece, and you're gonna start by sewing one at the end to there, and then add your other piece to the other side and sew up the end so that you have something that looks a little bit like this. And then of course we're gonna press it open, and now it's ready to cut. So what I did to be able to figure out how to cut, they said find the middle. The easiest way I can always think of finding the middle is just taking and folding it in half and finger pressing it. And then I'm gonna use my Frickson pen to mark because if you can't see very well that fold and you definitely won't be able to see it from where you're at. So I'm gonna just show it so you can see it right there. Can you see the little two marks I've made? Now, why are those important? Because I'm gonna take the ruler, the triangular, and put it on there. But what I wanna show you first is, if you see the little spots under here, this is my um, maker tape. And what's nice about it, it's very easy to tear. So I can very easily tear a piece and put it onto the back of my ruler, and it keeps it from sliding around. So that's really handy, because you know how hard that is sometimes when your ruler is sliding all over the place. And if you're really good at cutting, you can just layer one and two, and I'm gonna do that, and I'm gonna start with this at the top. So I'm gonna place the center line on that little center mark right there, you can see, and the center line is gonna line up also down here. So once you have those center lines lined up and you're lined up where you need to be, and I'm gonna just move that up a little bit more, you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna go ahead and make your cut. So you make one cut, and then your second cut, and you have, voila, your little pieces for your petals. Isn't that cool and fast? So you're gonna take these two pieces and you're going to lay them right sides together, just like this, and sew them with a quarter inch seam. And then you've got that look. So you do your quarter inch and you're gonna press it. And you're gonna have two of those so what's gonna happen here is you've got two, and that makes a half. So we're gonna lay them together very easily here. Line them up and lay them on top of each other. It's just amazing how this works. Take it to your machine. Using a quarter inch seam allowance, we're gonna go ahead and just take and um, sew that up the edge. If you're a pinner, go ahead and pin. I'm not much of a pinner, but it's a good way to do this. And once you get it done, okay. And then you're going to take it over here and get it pressed in one direction. So I'm pressing to one side. And you've got, now at this point, you've got a half of a unit. So, 
you make two half units and then you will sew them together. And when you're done sewing them together so that you have a whole unit that looks like this, you come back onto the edge with your triangle pieces right here and you just lay them on top and believe it or not, they work out beautifully so that you have that little peak here where you're a V for the valley and you're gonna sew across there from valley to valley, which is a quarter of an inch. So I'm gonna do that really fast for you to see. Go ahead and start sewing that. And again, if you're a pinner pin and if you're not, that's okay too. See how nicely that goes from the valley to the valley there? And then you're just going to uh, press this away. Now I wouldn't recommend the black thread, but I find it's nicer for you to be able to see what I'm doing if I do that. So that creates your corners when you do that. Makes it really simple and pretty soon, voila, you have this block done. Something else that I don't often tell a lot of people, but I'm gonna tell you today, my best trick in the whole wide world is a towel. So I like to take a towel, whether it's an old towel from your, that's kind of getting worn out and beat up and down. And I like to press my block using that and some spritz of the best press. So you can spritz it up a little bit and then um, just press it right on that towel. And it will press out so nice and flat because the towel itself absorbs, because you can have a nice thickness in this center that sometimes hard to press. And the towel absorbs all of that and allows it to press out really nicely, nice and flat for you. So that's a good little way to begin with that. So that was that one. Nice and easy, cute, fast, wouldn't take you any time. You could make pillows, table runners, all kinds of stuff in there. And the other one I wanna show you today is I would like to show you the little trees. Christmas is just around the corner and the book has this really, really cute little Christmas tree quilt that I think, again, would make a very cute table runner or uh, just a small little wall hanging, whatever you'd like to do, or the big quilt, either or. Um, so I'm going to show you how that works as well. Again, we're just going to take a strip set, believe it or not. So this is a strip set of just sewn some pieces together. And I'm going to take my angler ruler here, triangular ruler, and I can, I'm going to set this one up so that it is at the bottom of the ruler, and then I'm going to make a cut. And what's nice is I've sewn some different pieces together. It doesn't have to be anything specific. Cut off one side, cut a little bit on the tip, and cut the other side. Cut that off, and you've got one tree. Very fast and easy. I'm going to put it over here so you can see that. And then you're just going to turn your ruler all the way over and you can lay it again on the bottom or line it up. I always like to uh, make another trim because I don't always necessarily end up with a good cut there. I'm going to line it up. Does it matter that your trees aren't exactly? No. Have you ever met a tree exactly the same as the other tree next to it? So no. You can just make these so that they are different sizes and it doesn't matter too much if they're not exactly exact. So here's tree number two. So you have two different, completely different trees out of that. Oh, and guess what? I have a little bit left. So I can just take my ruler and move it till I can get what I can get out of it. So I can get a tree about there. I'm gonna move it down a little bit using the straight line here and making a cut and making the other cut. And I got a third tree out of that piece. So there's really virtually no waste. Isn't that neat? You can just have some great little trees here. So those are the easy part to cut the trees. Now we're gonna go and we're going to, I'm gonna show you how to cut the piece that goes on the side of your trees. So then you take a rectangle, and of course in the book she gives you the measurements. I'm just gonna put it down, I'll put, move it over here a little bit. You're gonna take your triangular ruler and you need to put the tip at the top, not the bottom, but the tip, where the trees we cut with the on the bottom and we're gonna do the top. There's also this line that's the center and we wanna be off to a quarter of an inch because that's for our seam allowance. So I'm gonna make sure we're up where we need to be at the top. And then once we're at the top, we're gonna go ahead and cut. And you make the cut and then pull that piece away 
turn it over and we're going to do the same thing on the other side making sure we get that extra quarter of an inch there lining it up straight on that side which means you're on bias and you're keeping this straight a grain it makes it a much easier piece to work with you're going to have a little bit of piece left but now you have cut two pieces to go on to the edges of your blocks so here's your piece and you're going to open these up because I cut two at a time and these will fit of course these ones are just a little bit small but I wanted to just show you how they are you will take to piece these the best way to piece these is you're going to lay this I'm going to move it up here so you can see it a little better I hope so you're going to take your piece and bring it up till you kind of see that valley once again and I know that's a little hard to see but there's a little valley right here that's happening I'm going to move it back just a teeny bit when you see that valley right here you know that you're a quarter of an inch and you're going to go ahead and sew and it'll come out so I've sewn one together here for you and you can see you can barely see that valley but if I turn it over you can see where that valley came together right here making it nice and then you're gonna open it up and press it and what you're looking for when you press that is a nice straight line across the top and that's a good way and then you're just going to do again take your other piece and you're going to um, I probably cut I cut this it's the opposite one there we go we'll just improvise here so you lay it on top and you your valley will be easier to see this time because you have the other fabric there let me just line it up for you so can you see the valley starting right here right at that point and then you would sew down the edge and then you would end up with your finished block just like this and all I did was take another little piece that I created with a stem and you put it underneath and sew it on and you've got your little finished block so everything's nice and straight you maybe have to trim a teeny bit but not much and you've got your tree blocks there's one other quilt that we want to show you that came out of this book that is amazing and on the book itself it's in there but it's this quilt right here and we did it with a layer cake because it's very layer cake friendly the book uses layer cakes and um, charm packs those kinds of things to do things but isn't this a gorgeous quilt and this is using the angler as well so come see us on Tuesday we're gonna have a lot of fun show you how to use the ruler and the book and have a great rest of your week this is Julie from the Song Palace thanks <laughs>